afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here on Bluff Road. Um, we appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule to be here. Um, and we're going to get started and not hold you. Uh, I did want to let you know that coffee, lattes, donuts are available courtesy of First Citizens Bank. So please help yourself. Um, and at this time, we'll have an opening prayer from Reverend Charles Epps, who is a longtime member of the Starlight community. I ask that you bow your head with us. Eternal God, our Father, the giver of all good and perfect gifts, we praise and bless you now for your wondrous deeds. All that we have come from your boundless goodness and generosity. Now, God, we pray that you bless these grounds and all that will occupy it, all that was set upon it. And may these grounds also be a place for innovation and productivity that will enhance the lives of many. We ask this through Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Epps. Um, and thank you again today for joining us. Um, welcome to Bluff Road, the Bluff Road corridor that leads into the city of Columbia and the county of Richland. Um, we've been named um, one of the best places to live by Travel Magazine. And it's a great day to be in the state of South Carolina, the fastest growing in the nation, fastest growing city in the nation a state in the nation, sorry, the <laughs> fastest growing state in the nation. On behalf of myself, Felicia Maloney, and the executive director of the Columbia Empowerment Zone, and the board of directors of the Columbia Empowerment Zone, we thank our residents, our city, county, and our state leadership to, and for entrusting us to lead the Bluff and Atlas Road Improvement Project. And obviously it's important from the number of you who are here to share in that. We are here thanks to an allocation of funds from the General Assembly to the City of Columbia. We are confident that we, along with our partners, will deliver a project that will positively affect the lives of our residents and create a model for our leadership to share with other leaders around the country. Thanks to the City's confidence in CEZ, I am proud to be here today to spread the word about the good things happening on Bluff Road. Now, I have the humbling experience to present to you the, the distinguished panel behind me, all of whom need no introduction. They are nationally <laughs> and globally recognized. Well, our first speaker, um, Mr. Russ McCoy, unfortunately, could not be with us today. He had death in his family. Uh, he is the chairperson of the Columbia Empowerment Zone Board and has led us for many years. Standing in for him to read a statement prepared by him is a board member, Ben Johnson. And at this time, Ben Johnson. Good afternoon. Um, I'm it's a privilege to be here, uh, pinch hitting for, for Russ McCoy uh, this afternoon. And um, as a, a board member of the Columbia Empowerment Zone, I'm extremely grateful to the city of Columbia and to the state of South Carolina for entrusting us with this project. Um, this is truly a, a team effort to really bring such a, a change to this, uh, to this part of town and this part of the county. Um, to start out, I'd like to thank CEO Delgado Centavo and Chief Organizational Development Officer Petra Cruz of Eau Claire Community Health for their commitment and, and your commitment um, to serve this community. Uh, this center is going to be life-changing for so many in this community, and we're extremely grateful for the partnership. I want to thank uh, Richmond County Administrator Leonardo Brown. Um, Sheriff Leon Lott and Richmond County Council for your interest in building a public safety center um, in this area. Your public safety, of course, is critical to the success of, of any project. We could not be happier that you're with us today. 
Also want to thank Daryl Jones and Jordan Jones uh, with, with Integral. Uh, they're our development partner on this project and their knowledge and expertise has been and, and will continue to be essential for a, a successful completion of the project. And as for the, the Columbia Empowerment Zone, we're extremely um, honored and committed to bringing the, the finest marketplace possible uh, that's going to provide fresh food, it's going to provide entrepreneurial opportunities, and um, a number of programs to this region. And we promise to do our best to make the marketplace all that it can be. Um, finally, of course, I want to extend our appreciation and uh, for the support provided by the state of South Carolina with the, the House of Representatives and the, the Senate for the appropriation that's provided the funding to purchase this property um, and, and do, do a lot of this development, and as well as the, the City of Columbia um, for, for entrusting us with that grant um, to make these improvements to the Bluff and Atlas Road area. The City of Columbia selected the Columbia Empowerment Zone to lead this effort and we're grateful for the confidence placed in us by the City and the General Assembly to undertake this important project. And now I'm going to turn it over to, to Daryl Jones with Integral. Good morning everyone. Um, we are pleased and honored to be here today as partners again with the CZ. Uh, the city, the county, as well as the state. Felicia asked me to talk about one aspect of this development that you may not be familiar with, and that's affordable assisted living. Well, you may ask, well, what is that? So let's talk about the, the state of affairs for seniors today when they can no longer live independently. Right now, unless you can afford $5,000 a month, you really have two options for the most part. That's one, to go to a nursing home way before it's time for you to be there. Or two, if you're really, really lucky, and my mother fits into this category of being really, really lucky, of living in the back bedroom of a loving and caring family member. But even with that, getting your medication, your food and safety, you still miss that socialization. You miss that control of your life. Um, and it's a very important element that we all take for granted every day in everything that we do. So affordable assisted living, and when I say that, I mean living in a first class assisted living community and paying roughly $1,000 a month, because that's all many of our seniors can afford, is something whose time has come. Integral took on this challenge about 12 years ago. We created a model out of existing resources at the state and federal level using low income housing tax credits and a Medicaid waiver program, putting them together in a way that we are providing that. We developed the first one in the state of Indiana. That was in 2015. Today, there are 31 in the state. That's how successful it is and the state would like to see a lot more. It makes so much sense from an economic standpoint because you pay maybe a third of what you have to take care of for an individual in nursing homes, and it's really what the seniors want. You know, this is, they should not be suffering in silence. This is their time of timeless relevance. So you're standing on a site today of where the first affordable assisted living will be developed in the state of South Carolina. And we are so happy to be your partner in doing it. Thank you, you Daryl. We look forward to that. Um, our next speakers will be um, Mr. Dalton Trasvant, who is the Deputy District Director for the Office of the Honorable James E. Clyburn, 6th District of South Carolina. Mr. Tresvant has been a member of um, Congressman Clyburn's team since 1993 and has strongly supported the efforts of CEZ. CEZ actually got its start, and that is the Columbia Empowerment Zone, through the efforts of Congressman Clyburn. So. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Bernice? 26 years ago, when we were uh, when Congressman Clyburn was fighting for designation of something in Columbia as an empowerment zone, 
you were fighting to make sure that we included Lower Richland <laughs> as a part of that. And we had some challenges. I don't know who else around was a member. Bernice would call every day. Um, I can admit this now since it's a success and we've done it. Sometimes I wanted to try to hide from your phone calls. <laughs> but because of the work of uh, Bernice and other members in the lower Richland community throughout Richland County and the city of Columbia, uh, we were able to get uh, Columbia and Sumter designated as a joint empowerment zone. Uh, Sumter has, uh, they have since separated. Sumter's kind of dropped out and their project has ended. But Columbia had the foresight to keep their portion of this project active. And it has really yielded good results in the city of Columbia. So Bernice, Paul Livingston, who's on council at that time, other members of, uh, I think Daniel, I don't want to tell your age, I think you may have been there as well. But thank you for your vision and foresight because the, the Columbia Empowerment Zone has really delivered um, for citizens of Columbia and Richland County. And uh, Bernice, your vision now for them to deliver for Lower Richland is coming to fruition. Um, and I'd like to thank, and, well, Senator D Jackson, I think you were hanging around at that time as well. So I didn't see you were hiding back there. <laughs> but um, this, we think, is just going to be just a small piece of what's to come in the future. So I'd like to thank all of you for uh, being here, the, uh, the partners, Eau Claire Community Cooperative Health, who we work with. Um, the empowerment zone itself, City of Columbia, Richland County, and uh, thank you to all your elected officials because I know how hard your job is. And Jermaine, I need to see you. <laughs> um, but I'd like to thank all of you for being here. And if there's anything that our office can do as you move forward with this project and other projects, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you. I'm not quite that tall. <laughs> Thank you, Dalton. Next, we'll have we'll hear from the Honorable Daniel J. Rickerman, the Mayor of the Capital City of Columbia. Uh, mayor Rickerman is one of the most passionate people I know when it comes to issues that affect the residents of the City of Columbia and his region, um, particularly in the areas of sustainability. He's always seeking solutions and willing to share knowledge that he has. He understands that knowledge is it's only power when you share it. He has been a strong supporter of this project since he was actually councilman recommend. <laughs> so he's been aware of it for a while. I was just kidding him earlier because if y'all saw him at the red dress campaign, he did the thing with his red dress tie. And so he didn't wear it today, but um, we'll hear from Mayor Rickerman. Good afternoon. It's good to see everybody out here. You know, usually when we have this many elected officials in one place, we're at a funeral. So it's uh, really good to see everybody here. But this is what collaboration looks like. What's really exciting about this project more than anything is that 10 years ago, literally 10 years ago, um, actually, I take that back, it's 20 years ago, 2004, I first got elected. And Senator Jackson invited me out here and take a moment to honor Chip Jackson as well. Chip and Daryl both invited me out here to see what they had a dream about. It was housing. It was about making it affordable and, and competitive for community members, but building a sense of community. They had visions of stores, markets, healthcare services. Guess what, folks? We're here. You know why? Partnerships. That's what it's all about. And I think that's what we're seeing more and more today is partnerships and this dream. Mr. Jones downplayed it. What, he's, what he described to you today about assisted living is a model that we don't have anywhere else. This is going to change the scope. When they first shared that model with us, I was ready to move that day because I realized how much of an impact it's going to have on our community and our state. 
And what makes it more special, it's coming out of the number one city in South Carolina, Columbia. Come on, let's hear it. Let's get excited. This is what it's about, but the, when you put all these pieces together, this project started off at first we talked about the, the assisted living. We got the apartments going down the street. We got houses here. We got the, the Neal Center. But what else are we going to have? We're going to have health care. And the market, the market was a dream. It was a napkin dream. And guess what? That dream's reality. And that dream's gone from being on a napkin that was a market to a state-of-the-art kitchen. A place where businesses can incubate. A place where they can sell their goods. A place where people can learn and have an opportunity to chase their dreams. Add in the food trucks. You add in all the different components. Hopefully as Felicia continues, you know, we have a lot of faith in Felicia because she's not afraid to try something. She's not afraid to move the needle and move it forward. And when you look at where this started and where it's going to end, it's going to change a quarter, a gateway to the capital city. So thank you all, Integral, city, county, the senator. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here if you wouldn't keep pushing and fighting. So thank you. Come on, let's give it up. So with that, I'm going to relinquish it to, you got it? <laughs> thank you, Mayor. As I said, he was a very passionate man. Uh -huh. uh, Will Brandon, who is the um, district representative for this area, could not be here today. So um, we have the Honorable Tyler Bailey getting his, wet, his feet wet. He's the newest member on council. So we'll hear from Mr. Bailey. Good afternoon, everybody. Are y'all excited about this project? because I, I really am. It's been a pleasure to be here. I'm, there's a lot of elected officials here, but I'm the newest elected official here. And uh, when I was running for office, Representative Jermaine Johnson told me, don't forget about Lower Richland. And this is my first elected official speaking engagement, so how could I forget about Lower Rich Richland? I want to recognize all the elected officials here. We have uh, Chairwoman of County Council, Jessica Mackey, uh, Councilwoman uh, Shaquise Newton, uh, Cheryl Harris and Angela Coburn from uh, Richland School District 1 and Councilman Livingston and Representative Jermaine Johnson along with the Senator. Thanks y'all for y'all support of this area. I'm very excited about this project. The whole city is excited about this project. And I also want to recognize Bible Way for their vision in developing underutilized land areas in this area. And I'm a son of a pastor and a leader like Senator Jackson who leads his congregation. Um, serves in the community in the, the uh, General Assembly and also looks how it can better neighborhoods and communities surrounding the church is something that needs to go recognized and honored. So we should all give Senator Jackson flowers for his work that he's done over the years. Uh, we're excited about this project. It's going to be huge for this area. And we're excited about our partners and we're looking forward to the growth here. Um, this is a huge, important corridor for the city of Columbia. So we're excited and we look forward to the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Next, we're going to hear from Mr. Leonardo Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown is the um, county administrator for Richland County. Uh, he leads the executive team for the county that oversees services for over 4,000 residents and, um, and council members. He provides leadership and budget and financial management, crisis management, talent and team development, strategic planning, and uh, community and media engagements. So if we'll hear from Mr. Leonardo Brown. Thank you. Thank you. I'll start by saying what everyone else has said. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And uh, we certainly do have a lot of elected officials here. And as any of you all know, uh, you always want to make sure you take care of home. So I'm going to recognize uh, the council member who represents this district, uh, who is uh, adamantly excited about this project, and it's Ms. Cheryl English. Ms. English, good morning, good afternoon. So on behalf of Richland County Council, uh, Council Chair, Chair Jessica Mackey, who was introduced earlier, Ms. English, who represents this district, and Richland County Council as a whole, those who are present and those who can't be here, I'm really honored to stand before you this afternoon to talk about this idea of the redevelopment of the Bluff and Atlas Road area. 
Not only is this a significant investment in the residents that we serve, but it will also pay dividends as we collaboratively bolster the vibrancy of this community and the quality of life for our residents. And you've heard that term collaboration used over and over again. Uh, and our council, our city, our community partners, our state representatives uh, and our state senators have continued to try to work collaboratively so that Richland County residents can benefit from all the resources that our state has to provide. Specifically, Richland County Council has a strategic plan. And if you're not familiar with that plan, I'm gonna to talk to you just very briefly on three important points. One is to foster good governance. One of the things that Richland County Council has tried to do is figure out a way that it could demonstrate its commitment to fostering good governance. And Richland County's portion of this development with this magistrate facility and sheriff substation is its investment in fostering good governance for the lower Richland area. Uh, secondly, I want to talk about just very briefly this idea of planning for growth through inclusive and equitable infrastructure, which is one of those six goals. The idea behind that is to work with our partners and take a look at how we can leverage future investments, again, to improve the quality of life for the residents. And finally, is to establish operational excellence. And one of those initiatives is to create amenities that benefit the residents. We believe that the magistrate and sheriff substation will create an amenity that will serve not only the justice system, but the residents who facilitate that process. Uh, and whether it's water and sewer or residential and commercial development, Richland County is committed to providing residents throughout Richland County with the enhancements needed to support and serve planned growth. This redevelopment project is a testament to the growth through collaboration between different governmental entities as well as community partners. So again, on behalf of Richland County, we're very excited and we're looking forward to continue to serve this community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And before I introduce our next speaker, I would like to recognize Chief Holbrook, who's standing in the back back there. And I I think that's my boss standing next to him, but not sure. Yeah, Missy Gentry, ACM, Missy Gentry, whom I report to. So we'll next hear from Sheriff Leon Lott. Um, he first came to Richland County Sheriff Department in 1975 as a patrol officer and advanced through many positions before taking on chief of police <laughs> <laughs> position. And another, that's okay. Thank you. you look fabulous, Thank that's you. okay. <laughs> And he decided to come back, and in 1996, he became the sheriff of Richland County. Um, sheriff Lott um, <laughs> turned the direction of the department into community-oriented policing. And so you see why he fits so well in this community project. Thank you, Sheriff Lott. I want to say wow to see everybody here. Uh, I know the elected officials all got recognized. Uh, left Seth Rose out, so Seth, I'm gonna throw you in that group too. But there's so many community leaders here from Arthurtown, Taylors, McCamden, Eastway Park, all these places. So, you know, I want everybody that's here supporting this project, raise your hand. Raise your hand, everybody here. That's how important y'all are. So let's give everybody a round of applause. As she stated, um, been here since 1975. I have seen this area for many, many years. And in 96, after y'all elected me, we talked about having a substation in this area, that we needed one. And Bernice and I did talk about it a lot. We prayed about it a lot. We fought about it a lot. But guess what? It is coming about, coming about now. And we welcome this. Now, this is going to be a joint effort. It's not just the Sheriff's Department of Master. Chief Holbrook and his people will also be working. It's all about public safety, about us working together. And, and when you have a project like this, for it to be successful, everybody has to work together. So that is why we're here today, because so many people came together, not just one group, not just two groups, but everybody, with the support of this community. So I'm very excited about it. I'm excited about what it's gonna to bring to this area. You know, the visibility of having deputies work out of here, visibility having city police officers work out of here, that, that's all that's gonna do is improve this area even more. The Lower Richland area is a great community. It's been left out a lot of times in the past. Those days are over with, and today is a proof of that. So thank y'all for making this happen, thank you.
Thank you, Sheriff Locke. Uh, we'll next hear from Pietra Cruz. Uh, Pietra is the Chief Organizational Development Officer. That's a mouthful. For Eau Claire Corporate Health Centers. She's been with Eau Claire for a number of years now, and she leads the day-to-day -day operations. Um, and she is all about the business of providing health care. That is her passion. She lives for it every day. And so with that said, I'll introduce Ms. Cruz. Thank you, Felicia, for the warm welcome, and good afternoon, everybody. It is such an honor to be here and to see all the support that we have, especially for community health centers. Um, as Felicia mentioned, my name is Pietra Cruz, and on behalf of our board of directors and our CEO, Mr. Delgado Cantab, again, an honor to be among such a designated group of supporters in the community. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Eau Claire Cooperative Health Center, we are a community health center providing services to our marginalized community communities or populations that make up the communities in which we live. And being a part of a project like this is monumental. And it's monumental because words that I heard today that were mentioned um, with our partners, our colleagues, our collaboration, um, support, um, having an idea and sticking with that idea and gelling around the idea. And what we see here today um, is the effects and the result of keeping each other lifted and having that idea yes having that idea and bringing it to fruition so while we have not broken ground please know that we are extremely excited to be doing so in the near future and again um, on behalf of community health centers, um, we stand on the shoulders of you all who are here with us today. Um, we are advocates, all of us are advocates, not only for the services that we provide, but for the persons who truly rely um, on not only healthcare services, but as a community health center, for many we are a beacon of hope, and you all provide us that stability um, to continue to operate in our community. So again, on behalf of our board of directors and our CEO, and and um, everybody in the community who relies on the services that we provide, thank you. We are truly looking forward to this project. Um, we are extremely grateful for the support and um, the confidence that the team behind me um, has shown in cooperative health throughout the years. And with that, I will hand it back to you, Felicia. And before I go on, I would like to recognize two other board members, Mary Sparrow and uh, Reginald Bryce over here. But of course, um, I don't make up CEZ all by myself. Our board of directors provide guidance, support, literal work. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have staff, Verdine and, Cle and uh, Crystal, and we have Morgan, who is our intern, and Xavier and Eddie in the back back there. Um, so can you please give my staff? And this is how you've heard a little bit about the marketplace here and there mentioned, sprinkled throughout the conversation. So on the site we're, we're on here is, is scheduled to be the uh, magistrate office and um, substation. But on the other side of the road there is scheduled to be Eau Claire Corporative Health. And then just beyond there is the marketplace. The marketplace is going to be a commercial kitchen, five commercial kitchens. It will support entrepreneurs to help generate uh, intergenerational wealth um, and we have food trucks out here so mostly entrepreneurs in the food service and artisan industry will be able to use that you have a lot of people we have a lot of good cooks in South Carolina and I'm sure down here in the Bluff Road area <laughs> so they need a place to go and prepare their their products in a DHEC approved kitchen a lot of people are getting into natural uh, skin care products, they need a place to go and um, market, um, prepare those products and, um, and and distribute them and package them as well. So this kitchen is scheduled to be have five kitchens right now teaching as we've been a longtime partner of Eau Claire Corporative Health. So um, Eau Claire will be able to also use the kitchens for teaching classes to help some of us get our cholesterol down. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, you know, teaching us to, to prepare meals in a healthier way. Um, it'll also have an event center where people can use it for birthday parties, small weddings, and it will our weather here, you know, it could be winter today and spring tomorrow. So we're going to make sure that it's an indoor-outdoor event. So, you know, you, you won't have to scurry and change. If it starts to rain, you can just be on the inside and those kinds of things. On the other side of that, um, the junkyard we've cleaned up. That was a junkyard. And we're working to get EV charging stations there. We have um, board members and other people who are driving electric vehicles and there are no charging stations in the area. So that is our goal for the junkyard on, on that side. And there's a garage there for food truck bin owners who can't park in their um, communities because of the regulations that surround their community. So it'll be a great place to promote entrepreneurship and community activity. There'll be walking trails, and we've asked that the walking trails are wider, um, particularly as we address um, seniors like me. Uh, our baby boomers who are getting older and we have a lot of seniors who um, drive their wheelchairs like it's their, that is their vehicle. So we're going to make sure that it is safe and people don't have to go out on Bluff Road to get from one facility to the next facility. And after this program we're going to unveil the site plan up here for you to see. So we have some before pictures and, and we'll unveil the site plan so you can see what we have planned. Now with that, I'm going to introduce my fearless leader of the City of Columbia, Ms. Teresa Wilson, who is the uh, City Manager of the Capital City. <laughs> uh, she leads the City's executive team. <laughs> Checks in the mail. <laughs> and she oversees approximately 140 services for 145,000 residents. Um, the City is currently growing at a rate of 2.3 percent, and Ms. Wilson is uh, truly a service-minded individual. She's dedicated to supporting her staff and providing the resources that we need to do our jobs and providing opportunities that improve the lives of the residents. Hi everyone. Good afternoon. Hey Ms. Bernice. <laughs> um, thank you all for being here. We are totally excited um, Felicia and the CEZ board and the staff at CEZ, as Felicia described, you know, this is visionary work and it's hard work and it takes time and I know there used to be a farmer's market out here somewhere but it went to a different county I believe at some point in time and that's all good and sometimes when things like that are happening we don't understand it and we wonder why and it may not be on our time. But if you're a believer, as we see it's happening now, it's always what? Right on time, right? So it's right on time. It's timely um, with many other things that are happening in our city and our county. And I do not want to underestimate, even though it's been described somewhat, but I think it's my turn to probably give a little bit more color to the history of the Columbia Empowerment Zone and how as an arm of the city, sometimes it is great to have those elements in place where a, a nonprofit entity like that can come in and be the conduit for projects like this. And so the CZ, they eagerly work to fulfill the goals of the vision of the city, the, the mayor and the city council members' strategic goals um, in partnership with their own mission. Um, the staff, as we've said, and the board of directors, they diligently focus their efforts on these type opportunities that promote entrepreneurship and creating jobs and eliminating blight. And so this unique ability to form strategic partnerships is really important because this is how we produce economic development in disenfranchised communities. And so I think we can't underscore that enough that this proposed Bluff and Atlas Road project is a great example of when you can leverage those different elements in a city and in a county and create the station at Congaree Point. Um, the economic activities, as Felicia just described, that this project will include 
um, components influencing how this whole community will continue to restructure itself. And you've got all the players here today who are going to ensure that that happens. It's not just the city, it's not just the county, but it is state government and health um, entities, et cetera, coming together to make sure that we have access for the people in Lower Richland that so richly deserve government services. They don't have to travel so far to get health care services, fresh foods, and entrepreneurship to really uh, help generate wealth um, for our future generations. It's a legacy project. Um, it wouldn't have been possible possible without this collaboration, as is all, and it's already been said. And I'm just really thankful that I can still be a part of working with individuals around me, the mayor, the city council, Madam Chair, county council, the county council members, and everyone who really are passionate. I know a lot of times um, as a community, you don't see all the work behind the scenes, but it is happening. And you see that finally manifesting itself with these tight projects. Um, this too is an important corridor um, to keep us on the map. It's uh, the gateway to the Congaree National Forest, for example. Um, so we want to keep those things in mind and um, really thank the board members. I'd ask them to stand. Felicia did mention the ones that are here. Uh, Reginald Bryce, Sarah, stand, stand Mary, Miss Mary Sparrow, Ben, Don ben Johnson, ben, yep. So they work really, really hard for no pay. So we need people who are willing to do those things. Thank you all so much and the staff and all the staff of the city that is here to help put on these events. Our assistant city managers are here. Our community development staff is here. Economic development staff. I'm not gonna call names. Y'all raise your hand if you're a City of Columbia employee. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you all so very much and your investment, all of you, in the quality of life for the residents of our city, our county, and our state. Um, the next person to speak, and I think it's already been said, uh, Senator Daryl Jackson, the Honorable Daryl Jackson, my mentor, my friend, um, has such a commitment. And you know, what I'm going to just say is, you know, we see a lot of stuff happen around us sometimes in state government and other entities, but he ain't about all that fanfare and the antics. He's just getting it done. And he has a partner beside him and Ms. Willamay Jackson, the First Lady, um, who is also such a wonderful part of this community. Um, they personally mean so much to me, and I thank them for their dedication and hard work. And we have to give them their flowers today, y'all, because they have been following this through for a long time. So, do you, you still want to come up? I think I did it for you, Felicia. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much to Teresa, who is just a wonderful person. I remember when she was a beginning a lobbyist at the State House for the University of South Carolina, and um, just done such a fantastic job into the city. Columbia, thank you for the wisdom hiring her as the city manager. Okay. And to the mayor of the city, thank you so much to Mayor Rickerman. Thank you for your incredible leadership. To Richland County, uh, Richland County Council, uh, County Administrator, thank you. To the chairwoman of Richland County Council. Now this is really um, a God moment because Jessica Mackey took Chip Jackson's place when Chip passed on to the other side. And now Stan Jessica, she is uh, the chairwoman of Richland County Council. To all of the city council members, if you're here, uh, would you stand? I just want to recognize you again and say thank you to you uh, that are here to <laughs> yeah. Tyler. And then to Richland County Council. Uh, thank you all council members. Again, would you just stand? Stand, council members. Uh, and then the most important body of all school board members, because I once was a school board member, so was Paul Livingston, and they shape the lives of our children. Would you all stand that are here representing Jennifer and Sean?
Cheryl Harris, okay. and who else is it? Angela. That's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, my son just told Angela that Jennifer was his teacher. And, I, and certainly, Angela, thank you so much. Let, let me say uh, that I'm here to say thank you. And there are three legendary individuals that I want to thank who've been here from the beginning. Dalton mentioned this. First, of course, is Congressman Clyburn. He and I were elected the same year. I went to the Senate. He went to Congress. Uh, I rode his coattail to get elected, and I've been riding his coattail ever since then. So thank you to Congressman Clyburn. I once worked as an intern in his office. Uh, thank you to uh, Dalton for being here. Uh, and then Bernie Scott. I know we've talked about, uh, we call her my Scott. Not only would she remind us, but when Bernice remind you <laughs> Other people have a heavy hand. Bernice has a heavy fist. Okay. She reminded, and she worked hard for this area. Thank you so much, my Scott. And then I have to say a very special thank you to Paul Levison, who was on council then. Um, Paul has always been an inspiration. I succeeded him on school board. So that's how long he and I have been around, okay? <laughs> But he was on county council. He saw something when no one else saw it. The Dream Center would not be in use today if it had not been for Paul Levison and this project. So Congressman Clyburn, uh, Bernie Scott, Paul Levison, please help me say thank you to them. I don't know if there are too many events where you have this type of collaboration. You have Congress, you have the State House, you have the county, you have the city, you have the school board, you have the sheriff's department, the greatest sheriff anywhere in the country. You have the chief of police, the greatest chief of police in any city. All of them are here and we say thank you. I could not have done this by myself. Appropriation starts in the house and people don't realize it, but you would never get anything passed if you can't pass both bodies. Kay Patterson reminded me when I was first elected. He said, son, you talk a good talk, but talk don't get nothing done. He says, you got to work with people to get it done. Thank you to Jermaine Johnson, who worked in the house. A very special thank you to my friend Seth Rose, who is here. Seth represent the Arthur Town, Little Camden area. Jermaine represents the Bluff area. We have a great, great team. The Councilwoman Shura English and Shaquise Newton, who are here also. And I'll leave you uh, with this one story. So when we were running for office, Bernice, remember this, Jim Clavin was running for Congress, I was running for Senate, Bernice was running for County Council, and we all were running, Paul. <laughs> for something. And there was a Mrs. Laura Jefferson, and you know who she is, Reverend Epps. She lived to be almost 100 years old. She is the matriarch of this community. She went everywhere we went, to every community meeting. I was 34 years old when I was elected to the Senate. I would have to pick her up and take her everywhere I went. And she said to us, don't ever forget the Bluff Road Quarter. Don't you forget Arthurtown, Taylor's, Little Camden, Bluff Road, every community, Richard Street, and she would make us name them. And she said, don't ever forget that. And she said to me on her dying bed, Judge Simon, thank you for your help. She said, son, it hasn't come yet, but one day it will come. And one day it would happen. I remember what she said. She says, I pray that elderly people won't have to go to somebody else's community to go see a doctor. I pray that one day that they will have what I never had, and that is to buy groceries in my own community, to get my prescription fulfilled in my own community. She was almost 100 years old when she died. My mom would be 90 years old this year. And my goal, Pietra, is that that health care center and that pharmacist would be up, that a 90-year-old person who lived her entire life on this quarter would be able to get health care and buy food in her own community. And that's what this is all about. 
Thank you. Finally, to the leaders of the neighborhood, raise your hand. These, these leaders of the neighborhood that are here, Ms. Reese and others, they, they not only shaped this neighborhood, but they've shaped our lives. Some of these leaders were leaders when I was a little boy riding my bike in the community, and they will stare here and say thank you. Then a very special thank you to a gentleman who's not here. Paul, not Paul, Paul Mitchell is not here. He's the president of Optus Bank. Paul Mitchell was raised two blocks down the street when this project was almost dead. Paul Mitchell wrote a check for over $500,000 to secure this land to say, let's make it happen. We said, Paul, we're not sure when it's going to come. We're not sure how you're going to get your money back. And he says, this is for our community. Paul is a product, proud product of Atlas Road and Joe Frazier Court. And he is now one of the most successful business people in the country. And he did what others don't always do. He put his money where his mouth was. And I say a very special thank you to him, to all of you. Thank you. We look forward to it. The first thing we are going to do tomorrow, right? Come on, Felicia, so I won't talk anymore. You got to <laughs> cut a preacher off when you give him a mic. First thing we're going to do tomorrow, you see that building behind me? It was, Sheriff Lott, a Bales Bondsman building. When they built the jail on Bluff Road, they told us development is coming. When we build the jail, you're going to have all kind of development. What they did not tell us was that all the development would be Bales Bondsman. <laughs> <laughs> and so I told Felicia, I don't ask for much, but I want this. The first building you need to knock down is the Bales Bondsman yeah, yeah. building. So on tomorrow, you see that bulldozer with Taylor Brothers on it? Yeah. On tomorrow, if the weather permits, that building yes. is coming down yeah. and be replaced with a health care and a judicious center. Thank you. To God be the glory. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Jackson. Um, I did just want to recognize our partners and just say thank you to the people who help and um, the City of Columbia Public and Media Relations Department, the Parks and Recreations Department, the City Police Department, the Office of Business Opportunities, the City of Columbia Planning and Development, City um, Department of Utilities and Engineers, um, Richland County, um, Richland County Sheriff's Department, the Food Policy Committee, New Millennium um, Properties, which is Paul Mitchell, um, Midlands Community Development Corporation, and First Citizens Bank. I also want to say the coffee and donuts are courtesy of First Citizens Bank, so please help yourself to um, some lattes, coffee. I've, I haven't had the donuts. I said I was going to wait, but I've heard some really good things about them. So please enjoy yourselves. And now if I can get the podium uh, members to join me and members of council, county council, um, city council, and the board members to join me over here. We're going to unveil the site plan. So look to be back on this property a few more times for some groundbreakings uh, in the future to come. Start for right now.